I just did a review on this $3,000 solar generator. Uh, we built this version for about 10% of the cost and it has about 90% of the functionality. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms and this is a really nice solar generator that I just did a review on. And this is an empty box that we're going to try to make a cheap DIY replacement option for a version of this that you can get without spending so much money. And, you know, when I'm looking at what I want to make videos about, I really do give a lot of thought to the comments on my previous videos. And when I reviewed this solar generator, everyone said, yeah, that's really nice, but there's no way I'm spending $3,000 you know, to have this backup power source. And I can really relate to that. It's a great unit. This is uh, rated for 3,000 charge cycles. That basically means you could run it down and recharge it every single day for 10 years. But $3,000 is a lot of money. I've, I've got something to add to that. Uh, at the end of that 10 years, the batteries aren't completely gone. They still may hold 80% of their capacity from what I've, from what I've read. Now, I've got my dad here to help me build this DIY option, and he's actually been running these forever, just on a, on a smaller budget. And you'll never get 10 years of recharges out of a, the kind of battery we're gonna use, but, you know, it's all about what you wanna spend. And so you actually had a need for one of these right now yeah. And you had no interest in spending that kind of money on it. Oh, no. Uh, his brother's wedding is going to be an outdoor venue, and they needed lights and, and music. And so we needed some way to easily and practically supply electricity to this outdoor venue. And uh, it just so happened that Brock came up with this uh, generator at, at about that same time. So everything worked out great. So we're going to build what he was going to do. And we're going to talk about what it's actually cost us because we're going to use a lot of stuff we just already have laying around. And we're going to talk about what it would cost to build a really nice version of this with lithium ion batteries and what it would cost if you were buying everything to do it the way we're doing it with, you know, just basically car batteries. So anyway, let's get this thing put together, see what we can run on it and do a little comparison. Like I said earlier, my goal is to not spend any more money than I absolutely have to. Now, a lot of my viewers, if you've got property and equipment, you've probably got an extra battery or a battery on a piece of equipment that you don't use very often. One of these batteries I had mounted on my trailer to run a winch, but I hardly ever run that winch, maybe two or three times a year. Same thing with the other battery, which was on this 1941 Model A. I start that tractor a few times a year. So having these batteries here for those pieces of equipment and never using them will ruin the batteries. So actually, this isn't just free, it's gonna maintain the batteries and make them last longer. Now this, Dad had recently bought this 1500 watt inverter. It was around $150, right? And so the first components of this are you have to have an inverter to turn your 12 volt power into 110. And we looked at those today and you can get really big ones for a few hundred dollars. 2000 watts is, my Geniverse is 2200 watts. A 2000 watt, so getting almost the same power, was $170 at Harbor Freight. And I've got two batteries here and we're going to connect those two positive to positive right here and then the positive on the inverter will go on that and negative to negative on the batteries negative on the inverter and that gives you power right there so while I'm setting that up I was thinking about when I was a kid you used to always when our power went out we just still had lights and TV and it feels like you didn't spend it very much on that setup so how did you do it 20 years ago uh, it, it's the same kind of story. I always had a, a battery that wasn't getting used much, a boat battery or, or one to an antique car. And uh, it was pretty simple. I mean, from the time I learned what an inverter did, I went out and bought one. And we would use them for when the power went out. We had a lot of problem with our power going out for just a few hours. 
and uh, if you can power uh, a couple lights and a, and a TV and, and your internet modem, uh, you, you'll be a hero to your young kids because, you know, everybody gets their entertainment then. And I also used them, uh, I'd take a battery with me and an inverter uh, when we were tent camping because it, it, it was able to have a light and a radio and maybe a fan. It was, it, it was luxury for tent camping. Now at the house, you didn't just have the inverter and plug stuff into it. You, uh, seems like you would set up a series of things that were all on a plug-in so you could just swap it over. You can, if you know how to do it electrically, you can wire a setup like this into a breaker box and have it to where everything on that circuit will work. But see, Anything you plug into that room, for instance. The way I remember you doing it, you didn't even go into the box. You just had like a plug-in that... I did at one point. I, I had it where I could plug in certain uh, lights and in, into either the house current or plug unplug it, plug it into an inverter. Yeah, so if the power went out, he would unplug all of the lights in that room from the wall and plug it into this inverter. So that was a kind of a unique and simple way to do that that I haven't really seen other people I, doing. I powered a small trailer house when uh, a family member was desperate for a place to live and didn't have the uh, funds to, to do much. And uh, I run the water off a 12 volt uh, RV pump. I had an inverter uh, that I powered directly into the power lines. And you could walk into that trailer, flip the light switch on, the lights would come on, go over and pick up the remote, turn the TV on, watch a movie, ceiling fan would run. Uh, the basic low level, you know, didn't draw very many amps. And you never- All, all worked. You never spent three thousand dollars on it, no, right? No, 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 no. Most of the time, like I say, it would be a battery I already had, and uh, I used the inverter for a number of different things, uh, just like you would this this Boughton one. Only, only it wasn't as powerful. The newer, the newer uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries are amazing because they'll hold they weigh about a third as much, and and claim to ha hold about twice as much energy. So that's definitely a lot more portable now than it used to be. Another thing, the inverters uh, years ago just transferred power. Now they have limits in them to where if the battery doesn't have enough voltage, it'll shut itself down. If you're drawing too much voltage through the plugins, it'll shut itself down. They have a watt meter in there to tell you how many watts you're drawing. Um, but what a lot of people probably don't realize, and, and this has changed a lot too, in recent years, uh, most things don't draw very many watts. Uh, you, can, you can have an LED bulb that runs on uh, under 10 watts pretty easily. And, uh, and so you run a couple LED lamps. Uh, I looked it up and a, a 55 inch flat screen TV draws about 57 watts uh, uh modem internet modem is about is under 10 uh you could you could pretty much light and, and have your entertainment for under 100 watts yeah and a battery a good battery will run that for several hours before there's any and by that time you had time to uh, go get some fresh gas fire up the generator make other plans if if the power doesn't come back on so we've got this wired up now. We should be able to plug something in if we want, right? And yeah. um, and these are used batteries, and they're probably they're no, probably nowhere near fully charged. So we may <laughs> we may see a failure here, but uh, this yeah, is the basic setup. I put each of these batteries on the ch battery charger for a little while, but like he said, they're each a couple years old and don't get used much, so they might be weak. And putting it putting a solar charger on them will help to maintain the life because. When a lead acid battery gets low on charge, it uh, it will corrode the the lead plates, and then they short out. And so, keeping it charged up is is uh, the life of the battery. When you're talking lead acid, basically, just before we set this up in a box and get it finished the way we want, just want to make sure it's going to work at all. So we're going to start with the really low power draw. We'll turn this on. 
it's showing it was drawn. Let's see how many watts it's drawn. Uh, oh, the light's already on. <laughs> Show it, sir. <laughs> it's weird. This light's not showing that it's drawing any power off that inverter. <laughs> this is a cheap inverter, that's, so that's that's a that's a uh, LED light. It probably is drawing like one watt. It's not enough to register on the machine. So let's go up a step to something. But I'm I would bet that it'll run this drill. I don't know, you know, how much power this uses. Let's see if it says right on it. Nine amp drill. Eight hundred and forty nine watts. Then it dropped back to four hundred and twenty five. Yeah, I actually already knew that because I measured it on the, the Geniverse and was getting about that same number. About eight hundred at start up and four hundred continuous. So the two most important parts of this setup and where you spend your money is your inverter and the type of batteries you have. The better the batteries and inverter, the more power you're going to get. Yeah. But that's where your cost is at too. And when it comes to like the batteries or the solar, you can just continue to add more to it. You want to start out, I think you want to start off out with the inverter that you're going to end up with because you don't want to keep buying inverters. But when you're adding another battery, you're not buying a whole new set of batteries each time. No. And so now the only thing that we've shown that we just bought was these battery cables that link these two together. Now you recently bought the inverter around $150. Now I already had this tote actually. Boxes like this are fairly cheap and it's got a long handle and wheels. I think it's gonna be convenient. Now, we should probably actually just set this on the ground to do it. So this setup with the two batteries is heavier than the Geniverse, but it's got wheels on it. So if I had to take one of these 100 yards from here, I'd rather take this one. So at this point, we've demonstrated that this is going to work it should put out 1500 watts to the 2000 that we get here. I drilled a couple of holes in this, put zip ties on it. Now the inverter is locked in place. It can't short out on the batteries. You can plug in over here. You can read the display. If we wanted to, we could run little cords from here into here and not have to open and close this. It's got wheels. I've already rolled it. It rolls pretty easy. Now the, the next thing is, how do you charge this? And basically, you're going to have the same options you have with this. They're just not built into it. So I've got a battery charger, and I can charge this up in the shop. Then if you wanted to charge it off your vehicle, jumper cables. And if you want to charge it solar, solar panels are not that expensive nowadays, especially if you want a trickle charge. So we actually went and bought one to charge this with. This is from Harbor Freight. It's a 25 watt solar charger. And for a trickle charge, that's actually a lot. I have a seven watt version of this that's been maintaining the battery on my two fuel pumps for the last couple years. And I've never had to charge that battery just that because you don't use it that much. Yep. Now, if you're gonna use this heavily like you are this one, this one came with two 200 watt charging solar panels. So a 100 watt version of this at Harbor Freight was about $120. So you'd be spending $500 on 400 watts of charging, but yeah. that's a lot of charging capacity. That's like for heavy use. Yeah. The other thing you need with it is some kind of a charge regulator to keep your your uh, solar from overcharging the battery. And this one was $20. It, it, it regulates it to a constant voltage. Your solar panel might put out anywhere from 14 to 18 volts. And you don't want to try to get put that into a battery. So my system is just to clip these on to the battery and these clips come with the, with the solar panel. So, pretty simple setup. Now let's talk about cost for building up a unit like this. So first option is, you say, I don't have anything. 
and I want to build my own setup, you're going to spend a minimum of $100 on a battery. Yeah. For this size of inverter, you're going to spend at least $150. So there's $250. You don't have to put it in a box, but you can get a, a plastic toolbox like this and a dolly or whatever you want to do. You're probably probably looking at $300 to have an inverter and a battery in a box. And then this solar panel was $70 plus 20 for the Pro. So you're at 90. So say $350 to build a basic. And if you want a second battery, then it goes up about $100 more. Yeah, so the most basic version of this you can do is gonna be about $350 as opposed to $3,300. So you can save $3,000. Now this is not as nice as this, but it's also not bad for the, that price. Now let's say you really want to try to match this. You're gonna spend a lot more because these are the lithium phosphate batteries and you've looked at pricing those. Yeah, uh, about the cheapest you can get a 100 amp uh, lithium iron phosphate battery is around four hundred dollars, and most run in the five and six hundred dollar range. So if you said five hundred dollars and anticipate you needed two of them, that's a thousand dollars right there. You could get the the two thousand watt inverter for under two hundred dollars, and I'm rounding up. There's tax in all this, uh, so at that point you're at twelve hundred dollars. Arbor Freight sells a, a solar panel, hundred watt solar panel for 125 I believe. And and if we're really trying to go apples to apples, this came with 400 watts of charging capability. So if you're buying it at Harbor Freight, you're going to spend another 500. $500. Yeah. So at now that you're point, at 1700. You're, yeah, you're still at about half the cost. And you would need to get a better um what is this thing? Charge called? controller. You would need to get a better charge controller. Their good charge controller was like $70 yeah. that would handle up to 500 watts. Yeah. So to build the best version of this that you could, now we're at 1800 and let's say you get a nice box that everything fits in well and has wheels and a handle, maybe another $100. So you could probably build this yourself for $1,800 and have it be portable. We only spent $90 today. That was our entire cost to build this was $90 because we already had some stuff. But hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.